All right. So thank you, Francois, for that. Um, so now on to our last session uh, of the afternoon keynotes, right? One of the terms that uh, we hear a lot in the industry is this concept of a data mesh, right? There's a lot of excitement around it, a lot of open questions about it, a lot of opinions about it. So with that, uh, I'm excited to basically host for Fireside Chat my good friend uh, Jean-Marc Dekhani, who is the, you know, kind of at ThoughtWorks, coined uh, basically data mesh a couple of years ago and has literally wrote the book on it. So Jean-Marc, welcome. Hi, Arsalan. Great to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's right. uh, 6.53 a.m. <laughs> right and bushy tail, ready for this. Fair enough. How are well, you? Well, uh, you know, sorry to not be able to have you in person. I know there were some basically travel challenges, but excited to basically have you here with us virtually at least. Great to be here. Okay. So, so let's start, right? As I mentioned, um, data mesh is an interesting topic, lots of excitement around it. Uh, but frankly, I think that I oftentimes hear lots of conflating opinions. Isn't data mesh the same thing as data virtualization or data federation and stuff? Given that you created the term, you've been out evangelizing it, and frankly, literally wrote the book on it. Maybe we start with just getting your perspective of what is a data mesh? Sure, great question. Um, so I guess I give you a short definition and motivation behind it uh, before going into the technology that can enable it. Um, data mesh is a decentralized socio-technical approach to manage, share, access, data for analytical use cases. And most importantly, being able to do that at scale in complex and large environments within an organization across domains or even across organizations. So that's a definition of data mesh. Uh, the driver behind data mesh is really addressing the complexity of organizations within which we're using data today. If the previous generations of analytical data management where to address volume, velocity, variety. Data mesh builds upon it, but it tries to address constant change, continuous growth, and frankly, uncertainty that comes with complex organizations within which we're, we're using data. Fair enough. So you talked about an interesting point in there. It's kind of this balance between elements that remain centralized, right? Like core, basically, things that are common standards or common plumbing, and then pushing a lot out uh, you know, in a decentralized fashion. How do you think about that balance? What's the right balance of what are the elements that should be centralized and what are the ones that make sense in a data mesh paradigm to actually push out to be decentralized? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, as, <clears throat> as you said, data mesh is a decentralized approach. And the reason behind it is that we want to give autonomy to teams to different domains within the business to manage and share their data so if we mirror the organizational structure there are aspects of the organization that are decentralized and often in modern digital businesses the domains of business you know the the functions of the business that are operating autonomously they have a particular you know organizational structure the particular kpis and outcomes if you're a retailer you have you know customer management customer onboarding e-commerce order management payment these are the various domains that you have so it makes sense to also structure data ownership accountability and also architecture the data sharing <clears throat> decentralized you know map to this domain structure but at the same time, we don't want every single domain reinvent the full stack of data sharing, right? Mm -hmm. We want to have some sort of economy of scale and ability to really connect and share this data together. So then the underneath, and I guess the foundational technology, the self-serve platform that enables this autonomous, you know, kind of data sharing model becomes uh, to a degree centralized, right? That the protocol, the standards, the scenes um, need to be common and, um, and also the platforms underneath it, if they're not centralized, then we're reinventing the wheel in every single domain. Uh, fair enough. So do you have a sense mm -hmm. of what some of those core parts that are uh, oftentimes basically centralized, what it is that you basically want, you want standards? You had alluded to elements of around, you know, governance mechanisms and like, what are the ones that are more commonly that from what you've seen centralized and what are the, uh, you know, the other pieces that then end up getting pushed out to be decentralized? Yeah. So if we think about kind of the data stack as semi-layered 
structure, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the storage, we've got the compute, we've got those foundational technology, the API management for sharing data, the um, authorization access control. These are the foundational pieces of technology that we uh, often find centralized. Having said that again, <clears throat> if, if there is anybody in, in our you know, audience that works in a large complex organizations, there is hardly ever one team managing one data yeah. platform, right? It is just this various data platforms pops up. So, so while we, in an ideal world, you want those you know, storage, compute, um, access control, um, repository, registry of the data governance, those tools to be centralized and uni unified, right, uh, in a way, we hardly find ourselves in that situation. So then if you are in a situation that you have five different data platforms on you know, five different technology stacks, starting with the seams, starting with pieces of technology that allows connecting data across these platforms would be the place to um, you know, globalize and standardize. So what are the ways that we share data <clears throat> across different, different, different platforms? What are the APIs that, that do that? So starting with those pieces would be a good start in, in terms of standardizing and globalizing or centralizing the technology. Fair enough. So uh, obviously, we spend a lot of time talking about the lake house. We're pretty passionate about it. Um, you know, at times, I think we, we get asked the question, are, you know, is, is Lake House and Data Mesh, are they mutually exclusive uh, from each other? Clearly, we have a perspective on it, but I would love to hear it from you that, you know, do you view those two as, you know, Lake House and Data Mesh as being uh, complementary to each other or mutually exclusive? Sure. Good question. So when I, when I think about Lake House, <clears throat> I think about it in two different contexts. One is, again, the foundational technology underneath it, like, Delta sharing, right? The, the, the storage, the access, multimodal access to data, the actual technology, I think that is compatible with data mesh and can be deployed in a mesh topology, right? Yeah. Um, we're talking about sharing data with open formats, open APIs in a multimodal fashion, whether you're doing a file based or you're doing you know, more structured transactional SQL based access. These are all great capabilities and can be deployed in multiple modes. But as people who've been sitting in this conference have seen Lake House has been deployed perhaps in multiple topologies, right? You have the topology of perhaps more centralized and pipeline oriented, moving data from sources across different transformations into a more centralized way of managing that data, or you can deploy that in a more decentralized and mesh topology and configuration. And I think as we deploy Lake House in a mesh topology, we, we learn you know, what are the capabilities we, we have to evolve and configure it so it feels more um, natural and intuitive. And I'm expecting that to happen over the next you know, few years. We're only three years through this very nascent um, approach, but I don't really see them um, exclusive and I see them complementary. And I hope that um, that can evolve to be even a more native uh, mode of operating Lake House. No, that makes sense. I mean, we've seen that from a lot of our customers who basically leverage a lake house to, to move towards a data mesh paradigm and basically absolutely have them uh, coexist. So uh, one thing you mentioned in there was you talked a lot about uh, what a core part of data mesh is. You talk a lot about it being open, right, and kind of open standards and open formats. Um, you know, would love to ha you know, hear you dig in on a little, bit that, uh, a little bit more to see what do you really mean by that and what makes that so important for realizing the data mesh vision. Absolutely. So two, there are four pillars underpinning data mesh, but two of those pillars are, you know, this domain oriented structure of the data. So instead of putting data in one place, one centralized place, we, we see data to be um, independently managed, owned around the domain of the business. And then the second pillar of that is sharing this data as a product in a way that it can be independently managed like a product, uh, discovered, um, you know, searched, discovered, understood, and finally used, and also connected. So if I have data from, you know, order management versus data from customer management and payment, I can connect these data together without centralizing them to run analytical workloads, whether that analytical workload is machine learning, model training, or it's a report or anything in between, I can do that in a distributed uh, fashion. So if, if you then imagine what kind of technology lends itself to this connectivity and composability, 
um, it has to be open, right? We have to have open standards. I mean, you and I can connecting across continents because there is an open protocol, you know, the narrow waste of internet sitting underneath us, allowing us to communicate. And we're not on the same vendor. I'm running a different computer than probably you are, but we are um, communicating. So that connectivity and composability that is so important to this data product model of sharing um, can only be enabled through open standards. And that's, you know, that's why I'm here talking at this conference, because I value kind of your contribution in this space and, and in the open source space. Got it. No, so that makes sense. And now when you look at open, you talked a little bit about the core parts. Um, are there specific elements uh, for a data mesh that you said, these are the pieces that are really critical to be open. Are there kind of key interconnect points, whether you think about it at a storage layer or whether you think about the analytics layer? Are there, I mean, I get the open overall vision, but there are specific aspects where you say just the pace of innovation happening, we have to make sure that those interconnects um, need to remain open? That's a fantastic question. And um, I just profess that to say that we are on the right track in terms of these areas, but we're not there yet, right? So again, if I if we look into the future and we said future of analytics and machine learning, if it, you know, if data mesh is a stepping stone toward that, is distributed, as in I, I don't need to keep moving the data and put it in one place to, to be able to run analytics. I can kind of connect, discover and connect this data and compose you know, analytic solutions then I think that data connectivity and data sharing with privacy and security built in um, is a key part of the open standard. If I use an analogy here, you know, in 2012, um, 2010 to 2012, we, we became kind of fascinated with this idea of microservices and API based, you know, application capability sharing, right? And today we easily build applications across APIs without even thinking about it. It's such a natural state of doing it because we agreed on HTTP, we agreed on REST and a bunch of other protocols. So I see the same pattern evolve hopefully in the data space that the, the new set of APIs that share data are designed for machine learning training. These are designed for distributed analytical data sharing. And I think that that's one of the core pieces. And of course that's without saying that that model has to build in privacy uh, and security in, right? Because now we're da sharing data across trust boundaries. Okay. Uh, so last question for you, um, which is you've obviously seen a lot of people go down the data mesh route. Those who've been successful, what are the one or two things that they did really well that you'd basically give out on advice for others going down that journey to emulate? One or two things. I, I try to keep it to a few, a few things. Um, I think I think first and foremost is that don't start doing it because you know you have a bit of a data mesh envy. It's a new buzzword, and you should do it. I think um, you know in the book I put a full chapter on data mesh as a strategy and organization, and it starts with self-assessment. You know, is this the right thing for you? <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think the organizations that have been successful had the, um, the right, um, I suppose, characteristics in terms of complexity of the business, in terms of diversity of use cases for data, um, you know, the, those the data-driven strategies and the top-down support. I mean, this is not an overnight change or a plug and play by data mesh plugging in. This is a transformation, transformation of your organizational structure, data model, you know, data ownership model and so on. So the, the organizations that have been most successful, they have that courageous leader at the top sponsoring a transformation and take you through all of the ups and downs that comes with a, you know, long-term transformation. Uh, and secondly, I think, the organizations that have been successful already had a, a domain oriented structure, right? They had technology teams that have been aligned with different parts of the business, um, that API based, you know, data sharing and or, or capability sharing. So they, they perhaps they had, you know, market services, they had an organizational structure that lend itself to this domain oriented data sharing. Um, and because of the, again, the novelty and newness of the um, technology and approach, these organizations, I would say they had technology at the core. Uh, they had the capabilities in-house to be able to try and test and evaluate different ways of bringing it to life and take take a you know good dose of risk as well because it's, it's still being tested. Um, I would say yes. So 
summarizing top-down sponsorship, um, uh, complexity, and really aspiration for application of data in variety of use cases. Uh, so inherent complexity and in the um, application of the data and also technology at the core. Okay. Well, Jean-Mac, thank you again. I obviously could ask a thousand more questions, but I want to let you get on to your day. And maybe that involves going back to sleep, given that we woke you up so early. So <laughs> uh, thank you again for the time and appreciate you being here with us. Okay. Thank you for having me and thank you for the impeccable pronunciation of my name. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Well, everybody, that wraps up, uh, you know, basically our afternoon keynotes. Please do go ahead and enjoy the rest of the sessions and see you back here tomorrow morning for another round of keynotes focused on data science and machine learning. Thanks again.